Get ready, America, for this is the best of Destination Small Town, a Cluck TV production featuring the shows that have taken Sweet Swine County by storm. The reality hit, The Real Housewives of Sweet Swine County, Sweet Swine's favorite music show, Backstage at the Commune, the tastefully done cooking segment, Cooking It Up with Betty, the always zany soap opera, As the Corn Grows, and of course, the wildly popular talk shows that share what's happening inside and outside Sweet Swine County. Which shows will you be seeing today? Stay tuned and find out right after the break. Get ready because our culinary expert and, dare we say, wine aficionado beyond belief, Betty Thompson is preparing some tantalizing dishes for us on her show, Cooking It Up With Betty. In the midst of cooking, our dear old Betty does join her What's Cooking reporters traveling throughout our story country. Now, on this station and the web. ...in part by Swine Tales Publications, the proud publisher of Sweet Swine County Maps and Plat Books, now publishing authors from throughout Sweet Swine County. Swine Tales Publication is now making plans for their next book tour, and they may be held in these small towns with the release of The Sweet Swine Diaries, a collection of unauthorized biographies by Cassidy Davis, featuring a riveting collection of the exotic, neurotic, chaotic, and even psychotic stories about the lives of the Sweet Swine County ladies. Miss Davis is quoted as saying, I have never seen so many single women with so many problems in my life. Enjoy. Each of these towns and their businesses are being considered to hold a book signing because of the information found on the best source about small towns of the Midwest. To learn about these towns and their businesses, visit DestinationSmallTown.com. Welcome back to another action-packed episode of As the Corn Grows. Today, we join Katie as she gives her statement to Officer Dave with the help of her hero, Ronnie P. Silage. Calm down, Miss Katie. Just start at the beginning. Oh, Officer Dave, it was awful. He had a big gun, a great big gun, and he was waving it in my face. And who knew? that Willie Odom, the Domingo Flamingo salesman, was really the winking bandit. Got to think we was living with a bank robber in our midst all this time. It boggles the mind. I'm a little hazy as to why Mr. Odom, a bank robber, would take you two hostage. Oh, well, you see, there was a bit of a misunderstanding. Well, well, it was all my fault. Oh, Ronnie, I can't let you take all the blame. I am a grown woman, after all. And, Officer Dave, I should have i should have guessed that that money in the sewing basket wasn't Adela's. Hold on, you two. Uh, what money? Well, now, no, you see, Katie and I was worried about Mr. Odom because he'd been gone for more than a month. Exactly. So, so I went into his room, well, we went into his room, uh, to try to find a contact number. Looking for clues and, and, and uh, contact information, that kind of thing. You went snooping. Snooping? Sheesh! So you went into Mr. Odom's room to look around? Yes, that's exactly right. We went in there to, to try to find a, a clue as to whether or not he might have had an, an accident or... or... Uh, that's when we found it. Found what? The sewing basket. The sewing basket? Well, it wasn't just a sewing basket. I, it was full of hundred dollar bills. Hundred dollar bills and you didn't report it? Well, uh, no, no, we didn't. We we discussed it and, and we thought that perhaps it was Aunt Ella's secret fortune. That she kept in a sewing basket? It made sense at the time. Yeah, but, but, but then when Willie came back, uh, we didn't have it anymore. You spent it? Well, in a manner of speaking, yes. Uh, 
I paid off the combine note at, at Cousin John's bank, and uh, the rest I gave to lawyer Ed to invest it. Yeah, uh, but, but I'll tell you, when, when Willie found out that his ill-gotten gains was gone, well, he was furious. So he herds us down into the root cellar and he ties us up. Melvin, get the phone. Melvin. Excuse me. Split Hoof Police Station, Officer Dave here. Oh, yes, Norma, I've heard about the kidnapping. What do you mean it just happened? Katie and Ronnie are right here. Cousin John and Minnie? You mean there's been another abduction? Sit tight, Norma. I'll be right over. Excuse me, Miss Katie, Ronnie, but I have to go. Cousin John and Miss Minnie were just seen getting into a car at gunpoint. Come and sit down. Be quiet. If you want a seat tomorrow, you will shut up. Quiet. Be quiet. Be quiet. You have something about John Robert, and we will have it back. Natasha? What the? Hey, who's the muscle? Oh, I see you have not been properly introduced. Well, uh, cousin John, Boris, meet your half brother. And his, um, well, his Miss Minnie. Brother? Brother? Half-brother. Ah! Apologies for the theatrics, my dears. Uh, but believe me, time is running out. Father sent us a gift that was intercepted by you, and we will have it back. Hey, listen, sis. You better believe time is running out. You're both crazy. If you keep this up, you're going to be doing arts and crafts up at the state pen until you're old and gray. Johnny's right. This is no way for family to treat family. Quiet. You. That voice. Why, you're the one who stole my shirt! That is right. I did steal your shirt. And you know, it didn't fit. But those jewels that you so stupidly glued on are now back where they belong, with me and Boris. Jewels? Enough, Natasha, get on with it. You are right, dear brother. Our plane leaves in four hours. <sighs> now, John Robert, I want you to tell me something. Where is the golden chicken? Golden chicken? Yes. Father sent you a set of four chickens. One chicken has very valuable microchip on it. We must insist we have it back. I'm not telling you two fruitcakes nothing. Listen, John Robert, I've grown quite fond of you, but Boris, well, he's uh, not so much fond of you, you know. If you don't want my Boris to work his persuasion on Miss Minnie, I'd say, you know, cut the crap and tell him what he wants to know. Well, I don't know. Johnny, I know where they are. They're in the office. You go up the stairs, to the left, through the office, behind the desk. You can't miss them. Minnie. Craig, we're putting this back in. Do not bite me. Either one of you. Do not do it. Just sit back in the room. And uh, no one is going to find you for at least a day or two. Das Vidonia! Das Vidonia. I can't believe I lost $200,000 to those two country bumpkins. Listen, you two. This is the St. Sloan County Police. We have you surrounded. Put down your weapon and come out with your hands up. Now! Well, well, well. With Katie's house surrounded by sweet swine's finest, is it curtains for the wily Willie Odom? Or will Officer Dave and sweet swine SWAT finally capture the elusive winking bandit? I guess we'll find out after the break. Get ready, because now you can watch a full of fun daytime talk show that shares the latest and greatest news about the people, places, and events found all over our story country. The Women of Sweet Swine County, hosted by three sassy ladies that tell small town stories with big town attitude. Now, on this station and the web. This program has been made possible by... 
The Daily Boar. This sometimes daily newspaper reports the news the residents of Sweet Swine County want to know. Also now featured online at SweetSwineScoop.com. Welcome back to As the Corn Grows! Now, we join Borat and Natasha as they return with the golden chicken in hand as Cousin John and Aunt Minnie sit helplessly awaiting their fate. Boris, get the bags. It's about time. I see you found what you're looking for. Yes, my dear brother, and guess what? We have enough time to get on that plane and celebrate Boris's 53rd birthday in style. Wait a minute. Boris was born the same year and the same time as you? The same day? That cannot be. Now wait a cotton picking minute here. Look, John, look closely. You're not half brothers, you're twins. Hogwash. Doi. No, Boris. Miss Minnie, she is right. How is it that I never noticed this before? The resemblance, it's uncanny. Melvin, get me a cold glass of icy lemonade. Now, Mr. Odom, why don't you make this easy on yourself and just confess? I ain't confessing to nothing. Oh, tough guy, huh? You gotta play hardball, are you? Let's just look at the facts, Mr. Winking Bandit. Listen, Barney, you ain't got nothing. When do I get my phone call? I feel like ordering a pizza. Pizza? Pizza? Listen here, Bob. You're in deep doo-doo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ain't got nothing. It's that Katie Olson, that Ronnie P. Silage you should be grilling. You kidnapped them. Kidnapped? Are you kidding me? They robbed me while I was out selling Domingo Flamingos. I get back, and what do I find? My life savings is gone. Vanished. Your life savings? They said you were the winking bandit. What? I'm just a poor salesman who has to beg little old ladies to buy my pink lawn ornaments seven days a week. So let me get this straight. You deny that you're the winking bandit. You bet your badge. Where do I file a complaint against Katie and Ronnie? So what? We have same date of birth, but we have different mother. But you, you're identical. Enough talk. Boris and I have plane to catch, and the maid is going to find you in a couple of days, so don't worry. Who can that be? Calm down. Father? Boris? Father! Oh my goodness, please, come this in and sit Swanson. down. John? Johnny? Boris. Enough! What in God's green earth is going on here? Hey, 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 call the cops. These two kidnapped me and Minnie and stole that golden chicken thing that, that you sent me, and they was about ready to skedaddle until you two showed up. Boris, Natasha, untie your brother and give him back his chicken. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Mrs. Swanson, for finding us. But Ugh. however did you know we were here? We didn't. We came to see Natasha to talk to her about things that we have left unsaid. What are you doing here? I'm helping Natasha recover family fortune from this Chicken farmer. This chicken farmer, as you call him, is your brother. And it's my fortune, and I gave it to him. But. No buts. The chickens and the jewel rightfully belong to John. Now, children. We're not, not your, your children. children. OK, well, listen up then. How would you like to extend your visit 25 years and spend that time in the state penitentiary? I think it's time we get rid of those lies and get the truth out. I'm, I'm voting for the penitentiary. Enough. This has gotten entirely out of hand. I should have married you while I had the chance back then. We could have been happy and none of this would have happened. What are you saying, Vladimir? I have been living in life for 45 years. When I met you and fell in love, I only pretended to be in the KGB to be nearer you, to be close to you. You were never KGB? 
I was never KGB. I was a used car salesman from Toledo, Ohio. I only came to Russia in 1955 for my grandmother's funeral. You never were KGB? No, try to keep up here. I was already married to Gretchen, but then I fell in love with you and I got divorced. I decided to stay in Russia because my grandmother was loaded. Then I married Anastasia. You were never, ever KGB? Now listen here, Willie. We have you dead to rights. You admit the money Katie took from the sewing basket was yours, right? Well, you better believe it. I earned every dime of it with my blood, sweat, and tears. And you say that Katie gave the money to Lawyer Ed? Yeah, she did, and that shyster wouldn't give it back. He said he put it in the bank. The bank you robbed? Yeah, I mean, no. Well, then how do you explain this? The money in Lawyer Ed's deposit were consecutively numbered bills from the Star County Bank holdup two months ago. I, I, well, I... I, I, will, I won't cut it, mister. Time to pay the piper, Mr. Winking Bandit. It wasn't me, I tell you. It wasn't me. It's probably that little weasel Ronnie P. Silage who's holding up the banks. Willie, 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 we have your DNA, your fingerprints, your voice, and your face on tape. And we have your wig. You kidnapped Katie and Ronnie. You put Cousin John and Marianne in the vault. That ain't nothing. That's evidence, bub. All right. All right. Call off the dogs. I confess. Now we're getting somewhere. I want to cut a deal. Deal? I don't know. What kind of deal? Well, what if I can give you the ringleader? Ringleader? Yeah. This guy has planned over 100 bank jobs in the U.S. What do you want in return? Well, I want all charges dropped and I want to be put in the witness protection system. You kidnapped two people. They stole from me. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. Yeah, but think about this. You'll be the most famous lawman in this county. Heck, the whole country. Well, it would be a feather in my cap. Okay, Mr. Odom, spill your guts. Well, the jig is up, and the sweet swine streets are safe. Will the winking bandit? Will he Odom avoid a trip to the big house? And will Officer Dave have to shine up his badge and polish his shoes for a guest appearance on the Cockleburr Morning Show? I guess we'll find out after the break. This program is made possible in part by Swine Tales Publications, the proud publisher of Sweet Swine County Maps and Plat Books, now publishing authors from throughout Sweet Swine County. Swine Tales Publication is now making plans for their next book tour and they may be held in these small towns with the release of One Duck, One Ventriloquist, An Autobiography by Lawyer Ed. Talented, driven, hungry for fortune and fame, the story of a man and his wooden duck against the world. The High Horse Herald says, this guy quacks me up. What a character, and the lawyer's funny too. The New Pork Periodical says, Best two dollars I ever spent on a book. Each of these towns and their businesses are being considered to hold a book signing because of the information found on the best source about small towns of the Midwest. To learn about these towns and their businesses, visit DestinationSmallTown.com. This program has been made possible by the Swine Song Commune, where musicians, artists, and hippie types live together and share their passions. To learn more, visit the online magazine at sweetswinescoop.com. Welcome back to As the Corn Grows. Now we join Mrs. Swanson and her lost love, Vladimir, as they lay bare their souls to their children, Boris and John. Oh yeah, and Natasha, and Aunt Minnie. Woo! That's a whole lot of soul to bear. Well, hold it right there, bub. You're telling me that you never were KGB? No, I wasn't. Is there anything else you haven't told me? Well... Well, spit it out, you used car salesman. What else didn't you tell me? Well, there was something that I did uh, regret. Uh, I did forget to tell you. 
and that was... Well, my love, you know, after you gave birth to John, I'm afraid you became unconscious. Well, I was exhausted. I had 39 hours of labor. John was a big baby, and it felt like there was a football game going on inside. Now, now dear, I, I understand, but there was a reason for you to become unconscious. As you see, the doctor found out that you gave birth to another child, Boris. I knew it! I knew it! You're twins! Oh, crap. I had twins? How unconscious was I? Well, you were out for 24 hours after the birth of Daniel. Daniel? Father! Daniel? Johnny? Father! Are you telling me we had triplets? Yes, my love, and I was overjoyed with the news. Did you ever think of telling me, where is Daniel? Well, the web of deceit had snared me by then, and I finally saw a chance to raise one of my children. So I kept Boris, and I sent Daniel to my sister in Birmingham, Alabama. This is all too unbelievable. Oh, Johnny, it's, it's true, triplets. You're the sap of your family tree. I tell you what, this family tree is so twisted. What's next, a sister in Boise? I'm sorry, Miss Katie, but they say I gotta do this. Oh, Ronnie. Ronnie, how can you leave me in the lurch like this, with Elmer off to Russia, and I don't know the first thing about farming? I know, I know, Miss Katie, but it's only gonna be for a couple of months. You know, Dr. Cornell, he says, I'm suffering from post-traumatic kidnap syndrome. So he's sending me off to the Albuquerque Dude Ranch and Spa for a couple of months. Well, that's great, but what about the trial? You're gonna have to testify at Willie's trial. Oh, I talked to the judge about that. He says this whole mess is gonna take months before it's all going to trial. Okay, Ronnie, well then, I hate to do this, but I forbid you to go. Well, I don't think you can do that, Miss Katie. Oh, Ronnie, please, please reconsider. You know, I cannot run this farm by my little old self. I just can't. Oh, get a hold of yourself. Get a grip. I mean, I have taken care of everything. Uh, my sister, my little sister, Bonnie P. Silage, is going to be taking care of everything. But She's right outside. Your little sister? Well, Ronnie, as I was saying... No offense, but I don't think a little old gal can run this farm. Oh, shoot. She's, she's been running Marvin Monroe's operation for two years. I mean, and besides, you're going to have Ricky Ray to do all the heavy lifting. Well, I don't know. Well, now, let, let me go out and get her. She's right outside. All right, bring her in. All right. Oh, hello there. Please sit. Please sit. Well, now, Bonnie P., my little sister, Bonnie P., this is Urban Kate. Oh, hi, Miss Katie. Must I say, it's a privilege working with you. Oh, my, Bonnie. Well, yes, that sure is one fine grip you've got Oh, there. it's a great grip. You know, I'll tell you, she's been the strong arm champion at the county fair for the last five years. Really? Beep. Do you lift weights? Mostly hay bales and small animals. Small animals? Oh, well, she's not one for bragging. But anyway, I got a train to catch, okay? All right, Ronnie. But you better be back here in a couple of months or else. Oh, I'll be back in a couple of months with bells on. But before I go, I got to do a parting poem, okay? It's a quatrain. It's got a, it's got an A-B-B-A -B -B -A rhyme, if you were scanning the rhymes, okay? ABBA, that's like that Swedish singing group, you know? Mama Mia, all that. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Hush! Don't let my absence cause any disconcert. Because I'll think of you as I hike and view the white doves of the desert. Bravo! Bravo. Gotta go! Oh, before I go, this is is for you. Oh, Ronnie, your hat! Wear it with pride. Oh! There goes a man with a quatrain to catch. So, Plow, 
Off to Russia, huh? Yeah, bring on the vodka. Yeah. That's pretty nice, sir. Uh, time does the hustle contest start? About nine. Yeah. See ya. Oh, oh, hey. Well, you know, sweet swine's loss is Russia's gain. I don't know who's going to do my taste testing now that you and Ronnie are both gone. Just don't do anything I wouldn't do. Yeah, okay, Betty. Well, is there anything you wouldn't do? <laughs> A good one, Elmer. Good one. Well, don't take any wooden rubles. Elmer, Elmer, you can't go. This is so unfair. I, I, well, uh, I, we can't, we can't make it without you here. I know, Burianne, but they're going to name my replacement here in a couple of weeks, and I'll be long gone. My plane leaves in two hours, and I'm afraid to fly. Two hours? Elmer, you can't go. There's something I have to tell you first. I have to tell you, Elmer, I, Elmer, Katie, I have Katie. to tell you. Katie, how are you? I heard you were kidnapped. Well, I'm pretty shaken up. First the kidnapping, and then I hear you're reassigned to a foreign field office. Oh, Elmer, you're my rock. Well, to tell you the truth, I'm a, I'm a little bit relieved. You know, it's not easy being the rock of this county. Oh, Elmer, please don't leave. I need your strength, your wisdom, your love. Please don't leave me. Please don't leave us. Listen, every time I've tried to help you, it's come back to bite me in the butt. And according to the trinomial probability distributions that I've calculated, that shouldn't happen. But Elmer, you know very well that the second law of thermodynamics clearly states that the universe must constantly move from chaos to order. Chaos? You want to talk about chaos? Because that's what my life has been like since you came to town, honey. First of all, I get arrested for burning down your house. Thankfully, your cat took the rap on that. And then, the picnic. Oh, who can forget the picnic? I get goaded into fighting with the biggest resident of this county, Cousin John. Don't tell me about chaos to order. But I'm living it. I had nothing to do with that, Elmer. I'm going to Moscow. I'm through with everything here. All I want is peace and out of this chaos. This do has you know... to do with Natasha, doesn't no, it? No, it doesn't. Do you know what I'm talking about? Well, Elmer, I don't know what I'm going to do without you. That is your misfortune. Oh, Elmer, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. <gasps> Well, 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 isn't that a slap in the face? Will Katie survive the sting of Elmer's words? And will Elmer realize he forgot to pack his toothbrush before he boards his flight to Russia? Find out next time on As the Corn Grows! This program is made possible in part by Swine Tales Publications, the proud publisher of Sweet Swine County Maps and Plat Books, now publishing authors from throughout Sweet Swine County. Swine Tales Publication is now making plans for their next book tour, and they may be held in these small towns with the release of How to Be Jealous of Yourself by Prairie Ann. Born with a total package and surrounded by jealousy her entire life, Prairie Ann shares her personal rise to the top as Sweet Swine's hometown sweetheart. Prairie Ann has thrown off the yoke of pure envy, theirs, not hers, and has put her vast wealth of knowledge in this tell-all book. Each of these towns and their businesses are being considered to hold a book signing because of the information found on the best source about small towns of the Midwest. To learn about these towns and their businesses, visit DestinationSmallTown.com. Get ready, because now you can see a late-night talk show filmed in front of a discerning yet agreeable studio audience. Split hoof tonight! Cousin John and his incomparable sidekick, Earl Silo, interview a roster of guests who make appearances that you won't want to miss. Now on this station and the web. This program has been made possible by Purdue University, Sweet Swine County's Institute of Higher Learning, with three classroom trailers that can accommodate up to nine students each. To learn more, visit sweetswinescoop.com.